Hey everyone, Rachel Alford here from Cozy Nooks Designs, and today we're gonna go over how to make the Snow Flurry tree skirt. As promised in my last video, I'm adding the Snow Flurry tree skirt as one of my free patterns on YouTube and my blog. And so this pattern is a beginner pattern. It uses double strands of yarn held together, and it works up very fast. It is like a big scarf for your Christmas tree. So I will show you how to lay it at the base of your tree as well. So hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as I have. So let's grab our hook and yarn and let's get started. For the Snow Flurry tree skirt, you're going to need approximately 848 yards of Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick if you're making the partial wrap or 1,272 yards if you're making the full wrap completely around the tree. So you will be holding it double-stranded like I've said. So I recommend getting these big bonus bundles. Um, that way you won't have to weave in as many ends. Most of the time you, you might be most familiar with these regular size wool ease thick and quick. The regular size has 106 yards, but these bonus bundles have 212, so it's twice as big and it's just less ends to weave in. So I recommend getting these. Um, I've had luck at Joanne, finding them at Joanne, as well as directly from Lion Brand Yarn. So I'll put links in the description so you can find these um, if you're interested in getting the bonus bundles. You'll also need a size U crochet hook or 25 millimeter. I have, um, I'll link one in the description that isn't wood, that is a uh, resin, because this wood one, it does the job, but it is pretty heavy. So it, it ends up being a bit of a, yar uh, a wrist workout. <laughs> it's fine, but I'll link another option for you in the description. And then also you'll need scissors and a tapestry needle. Like I alluded to in the materials, there are two different sizes for this tree skirt. A partial wrap, which is for if your tree is in the corner and you don't need the tree skirt to go fully around the base of the tree, or a full wrap, which is when it is not in a corner, the tree isn't in a corner and you do need the tree skirt to wrap completely around. So there's two different sizes for this tree skirt. Um, it's essentially just a very long um, scarf for the tree skirt. So to begin using double strands, I'm going to do a slip knot and then I'm going to chain 26. And so this is one edge of the scarf and then we will be working long ways out for the scarf. So the first size, the partial, will be halfway, and then if you want to make the full, you just keep on going and adding more rows. So in the pattern, it says that we need to chain 26. So I yarn over, and then I pull through. That's one, two, three, four, So you can see it's not a big starting chain and that's because this is the side edge. So next in the pattern it says working into the second chain for my hook I need to double crochet. So we don't count what is on our hook, this does not count as a chain stitch. So we go one, two. So working into this stitch right here I'm going to do a double crochet. So I yarn over insert my hook into that second chain, yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. So that is our double crochet right here, you can see it, and then these are our turning chains 
from the beginning chains we did. Next in the pattern, it says we need to single crochet one into the next stitch. So into this stitch right here, you can see we worked this one already. So the next stitch is right here and I'm going to single crochet by inserting my hook, drawing up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And that is my first single crochet, single crochet one. And then we need to do another double crochet into the next stitch. So one double crochet into the next. Yarn over, insert your hook, draw up a loop. So there's three loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. So the repeat for this pattern is to do single crochet one into the next stitch and then into the next stitch do double crochet one and that's the repeat that you will do all the way across. So doing the first repeat or the, the first step in the repeat we need to single crochet one into the next stitch. Insert your hook, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's single crochet one and then double crochet one into the next stitch. And we repeat that across. Single crochet one into the next, double crochet one into the next. One more time, let's do it together. Single crochet one into the next and double crochet one into the next. So you can see what we've done so far. The height difference between the single crochets and the double crochets, it starts to bubble and make cool texture shapes throughout the design, which is intentional. So Sometimes you will, well typically in patterns when you do a beginning double crochet in the beginning, you do a chain two or a chain three, but in this pattern it specifically says chain one to begin with for all the rows so that it can give this bumpy texture, check texture throughout. So that's intentional. Anyway, so I'm gonna complete this row. I'll end with four stitches left, four chains left, so we can do the end of row together. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll meet back up. As you can see, I have four stitches left that I need to work. One, two, three, four, and this is my slip knot right here that just gets ignored. So I've done a double crochet on this stitch, so this stitch I need to do a single crochet. Single crochet, into the next, double crochet, and then a single crochet into the next, and this row ends with a double crochet. And in this pattern, it alternates between starting the row with single crochet and starting the row with double crochet. And so if your row starts with a double crochet, then you end with a double crochet. And that way it helps with that bumpy texture that we're trying to achieve. So after we've done that, our, our row one, then we chain one and turn, and we are ready to begin row two. Row two, you single crochet one, and then into the next stitch, you do a double crochet. And then the next stitch, single crochet, and double crochet. So I am going to continue with this pattern across with the repeat of double crochet one and then single crochet one. And then I will meet you at the end of row two with four stitches left so we can look at the end of row together. Here I am at the end of row two. I have one, two, three, 
four stitches left in this row here. So I've done a single crochet. Now I need to do a double crochet into this stitch, a single crochet into the next stitch, double crochet into this stitch, and since row two started with a single crochet, this row ends with a single crochet. So it's a single crochet into this last stitch here. And then we chain one and turn, and then we are ready for row three. And you can really start to see this bubbly texture here from row two. And it just continues growing and getting awesome. <laughs> So row three begins with a double crochet into this first stitch right here. And then of course the next one is a single crochet. So keep on going in this pattern, alternating between double crochet to begin with and then single crochet to begin with, double crochet to begin with. When I know when beginners start working on this, it's really hard to see the rows because of the texture. So if you are nervous knowing how many rows you've done and you're needing to stop for whatever reason, you can always take a um, stitch marker and put it on your loops. And then you can write with a piece of paper on here, you can say row three, double crochet, to begin. That way you can help keep track of it if you are nervous counting the rows. So to do a partial wrap, like if your Christmas tree is in the corner, you're going to stop after row 40. And if you're doing a full wrap, you stop after row 62. And let me show you how to wrap it around your tree. This is a full wrap of the Snow Flurry tree skirt. So you can see it's very long and not very wide, like a scarf for your tree. So I'm gonna demonstrate on a fiddle leaf fig tree just so you can see the, the base of the tree better. I was afraid my Christmas tree skirt, the branches would cover it so you couldn't really see it well when I demonstrated. So that's why we're using this. Um, you can see I took the first corner and put it in the back of the tree, and now I'm getting the second corner and we're, I'm gonna have those kiss in the back of the tree. This is a full wrap, so the tree doesn't need to go in a corner because it can go completely around the tree, the base of the tree. Um, so know that for the full, it doesn't need to go in a corner. Um, and then you just take the bottom corners and you tuck them under so it, you can't tell it's a rectangle. And by tucking the corners under, it really adds some height and variation, which is what we're trying to achieve. We're looking for an effortless look, like we just threw this blanket down and it created awesomeness. So then you just grab handfuls and bunch it up so it's bundled. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate how to do a partial wrap. I don't have one made, so I'm just gonna fold it in half like this, and then you just drape it around the base of the tree. It does need to go in a corner though because it does not wrap completely around the tree. I hope you found this tutorial helpful for the Snow Flurry tree skirt. And if you're wanting more free patterns, just drop a comment in the section below so that I know what videos to make and what you're interested in. Again, my name is Rachel Alford from Cozy Nooks Designs, and thanks for joining me today. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in today. I hope you liked it. I am Rachel from Cozy Nooks Designs, and make sure that you give it a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe to my channel for future free patterns and tips.